Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your MMO Bomb first look for Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex First Assault Online. And yes, that is a bit of a mouthful. My name is Troy Blackburn, and I'm going to be taking a look at what is going to be a free-to-play game once it launches officially. This is a first-person shooter that is currently in early access on Steam. Minimum buy-in for the early access is only five bucks. But there are a couple of other tiers that you can buy into, including a $9.99 pack, a $14.99 pack, and a $29.99 pack. And those are going to get you additional bonuses like weapon skins and mods for your weapons and your character. Now the footage you're watching is me being fairly mediocre at the Team Deathmatch mode, which is one of three modes in the game. This is your pretty standard go out and kill everybody game mode. The first team to 10,000 points automatically wins the game. Or when time runs out, the team with the highest score is declared the winner. Now, unfortunately, I do have to point something out right off the bat, and it's something you've probably already noticed. And that's the pretty unstable frame rates, the stuttering, the hiccups that are in this video. That is not because I'm running some potato or that the game is so graphically intensive that you need a bleeding edge machine to play it. This is a known issue with the game. There's uh, lots of people on the forums complaining about it. All sorts of different you know, computer setups, different CPUs, different GPUs, all experiencing this problem. And of course, there's always the people who have no problems and just telling everybody, oh, it's your computer, it's the internet. That's not the case. This game's still got some things to sort out. It is early access. It is still essentially a beta. So things are being tested, things are being improved, things still need to be optimized. So you have to forgive some of the, the, the poor frame rates and the stuttering in the gameplay. It doesn't matter if I'm recording, not recording, high settings, low settings, no matter what I'm doing, I'm getting these frame rate drops, I'm getting the stuttering, I'm getting the hiccups. It's a known issue pretty extensively on the forums, there's a lot of talk about it. So why exactly is this game running so poorly? Well, it's one of two things and probably a little bit of both actually. One is this game was developed on the Gamebryo game engine, which has a bit of a reputation for, well, exactly these problems, especially the stuttering and the hiccuping. The other problem is this game is running on a single core. It doesn't matter if you have a duo core, a quad core, six cores, eight cores, whatever. The game is running on one CPU core, which is creating a lot of bottleneck. And you'll notice, especially when there's like a lot of gunfire going on around, grenades, people popping a lot of abilities around me. You get a lot of the stuttering and hiccuping. Lots of folks, like I said, sort of complaining about this on the forums. There's not a real formula for exactly who's having the problems, who's not having the problems. I've seen it with people with Intel cores, with AMD cores, with NVIDIA GPUs, with AMD GPUs, mixtures of both. So there's not one thing that's really having a problem with this game right now. It's, it's just sort of out there and it's got a lot to do with probably the CPU usage and the game engine that it's developed on, which is a little dated at this point. Another little issue I was having with the client when I initially downloaded the game was that the game pops up the very first time in some really awkward low resolution and I kept trying to change it to 1920 by 1080 and every time I would try to apply that change it would crash to desktop and it did that to me several times and I finally resolved it by just launching it one day and it was just in 1920 by 1080. So not really sure you know, what the problem was there, why I was having such a hard time, but just keep that in mind. Uh, like I said, early access, considered a beta, maybe even an alpha. There are issues, they are being sorted though. It is actively being developed. There was just a patch uh, with some hot fixes not too long ago. So it is actively under development. So don't let that discourage you. Just know that, that the road is gonna be a bit bumpy if you get into the early access. There is, however, some good news in all of this. There is a uh, nice enough player base going on right now that finding a match has not been a problem. It doesn't matter if it's been Sunday early in the morning, late in the evening, two, three in the morning. I've never really had more than a couple of minutes to have to wait for a match to pop up and enough people to keep jump in and play. The, the game is fairly adaptive. If it doesn't have the full teams on both sides, it will even those teams out and play with a smaller group on each side. There have been a few uneven starts, but as the game progresses, if more people queue up, they will join the waiting room and then join the game. So it will even it up as the game goes on. So the good news is you're gonna get games fairly quickly and you're gonna have plenty of people to play with, it looks like. So with all that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. As you can tell, it's a fairly fast pace. A lot of moving around, a lot of shooting, jumping through windows, going through corridors, a lot of fast paced action. 
you are going to die and die quite quickly. As you can tell, folks uh, do die very quickly. It's one of those games where, you know, a headshot is a pretty much a single shot kill. And body shots don't take a whole lot of time to knock you down either. It's very much a get up, shoot, kill people, die, respawn type game. Uh, of course, I'm not the greatest shooter in the world, so I'm probably dying a little more than some other folks. But nobody's going to walk out of one of these matches with like one or two deaths. That's just not the way the game is sort of set up. Now that being said, it actually is quite fun. That fast paced action does keep you very interested. Respawn timers are pretty short. And there's lots of things going on out in the world. You're running around, you're constantly, you don't never know which corner you're going to turn and either kill somebody or die. So it's pretty crazy and pretty fun. And if it wasn't for the optimization issues that uh, myself and a lot of other folks have been having, I would probably be interested in playing this a lot more than what I'm going to. That being said, I'm still definitely interested in playing more of this going forward. Now before each game begins, you're going to select your loadout, and the first part of that is going to consist of selecting which character you're going to play with. Each character in the game has an available special ability. If you look in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see a blue meter slowly filling up for this guy that is a nano gel suit that restores HP and gives a little bit of bonus HP. Now the blue meter is the tier 1 of my special ability and all characters have two tiers of their special abilities and some of those characters when they activate the tier 2 of that special ability will be able to sync with other characters and give them added bonuses as well. The tier 1 meter fills up over time or as you complete objectives in the game or kill enemies and get points in the game. And once I activate the tier 2 of this guy's ability, because the tier 1 gives me HP regeneration and a little bonus HP, whenever I activate the tier 2 version, my teammates can look at me, hit the E button to interact with me, that syncs my ability to them. They're also going to gain HP regeneration and bonus HP as well. Similarly, if you take on a character who has like cloaking available or a move speed bonus, if you activate the tier 2 of those, your surrounding allies are going to be able to look at you, interact with you, sync those abilities as well, and pick up the cloaking or the speed bonus, or both if there's a couple of characters around. That makes for some pretty interesting combinations. Now, as you can see at the end of the match, we're going to gain XP to level up our account. We're also going to get a random reward that we can use in this instance to customize and modify our character. And then we're also going to gain XP towards a next weapon unlock and modification unlocks for both our weapon and our character. And there you can see me towards the bottom of the score sheet. GG noobs. Now let's go back into the game client lobby and take a look at some of the mods and upgrades for the weapons. Like the ones we just unlocked by upgrading. As you can see, here's the submachine gun that I've been using. It says equipped right here. I've also got an assault rifle and a sniper rifle that comes when I initially unlock this character. As you can see, I'm making progress on unlocking additional weapons that you'll be able to have access to later on. But for right now, this is the weapon I've been using, so this is the one that I've been unlocking some mods for. We can go into customize, and the first thing that I've unlocked and have available is a new sight. So we're going to click on this. The N7 RDS is going to give us a faster aim speed of 0.14 seconds. And we're going to equip that and save changes. And boom, our weapon has been upgraded and modified. As you can see, there are other types of upgrades available. There's an aim assist, barrel, muzzle, magazine for additional ammo, a new grip. And all these are going to give different benefits to the weapon. But as you can see, I haven't gained access to or unlocked those yet. Now, when I did unlock the site through gameplay, I did have to, to initially purchase it from the mod store, spend some of the grind points down here, which I have 97,000 of, thanks to a couple of big bonuses every time that you uh, level up a character. That's a pretty sweet little thing. You have some GP in the bank there. But you had to spend, I think it cost a little over 9,000 to actually purchase that from the market. And now it's mine to be able to equip on this weapon. So we'll close that out. And speaking of the market, there are other weapons that are available to be purchased through the grind points, which you get simply by playing the game. As of right now, I haven't seen anything that is a direct cash purchase in the game, although the developer and the publisher Nexon have both said that they are definitely not interested in a pay-to-win game. They said that they want the cash shop to be fair, 
for players and the company alike to be able to make a few bucks but not sell power in the shop. So all these are available for points that you get simply by playing the game. We'll have to come back at a later time to see what sort of actual cash monetization gets put in. So going back to our armory once again, you can see we've also got secondary weapons. We've got the pistol, we've got the Megatech melee knife, and we've got a throwing grenade. Going back into the market, right now the only new things available are a new secondary weapon, the 44 Magnum. There's no melee, and there are a couple additional grenades. There's a smoke bomb, which is going to give some visibility cover for you, and the scrambler, which is a flashbang. Uh, you may have seen that actually in the gameplay that we just showed. I believe I got hit with a flashbang once or twice. And I've definitely seen smoke bombs in the game. Those do actually offer a nice strategic advantage. Now here's some of the mods and equipment that you can unlock just directly using your GP. You can see I don't own them yet, so I've got to get those unlocked through gameplay. Outfits, there's nothing in the shop as of right now. And the only item is the operative license, which lets you unlock additional characters. Now, there's a handful of characters in the game. We're going to take a look at here in just a, just a second. But there's one thing to keep in mind when you're first starting out this game. You're going to go through the tutorial, and it's just going to explain to you the basics of how things work, including how abilities on characters work. But it's only going to let you really sort of try one character in the tutorial. So when you go in to start a game, you're going to have to choose one of these operatives. Spend a little time. Look at the abilities. You may want to look at videos, how they work, something of that sort. Because once you choose that operative, that's going to be the one you're stuck with for a little while. Now, I've hit level 3, which didn't take too awful long. And I did get a free operative license simply for hitting level 3. So we're going to go in here in just a second and look at some of the other operatives because I have a license to unlock one. Or you can grind out some points and be able to unlock another one that way. But just keep in mind, when you're first starting your character, that's the one you're going to be stuck with for the first few matches. So you may want to be just a little bit careful as you're choosing those but you, because you don't just automatically have access to all of them. So speaking of the operatives, let's go in and take a look at that. Now, uh, this is uh, Borma. This is the guy that I have unlocked right now. He's got the Nano Jail suit, which is, lets me regen health. And the Tier 2 also regens health for my teammates. It's pretty sexy. And we've got all sorts of different characters with different abilities. Some of you probably recognize the characters from the Ghost in the Shell anime. It's not something I'm all that into, so you'll forgive me if I mispronounce a name or I'm unfamiliar with why or how a character is so awesome if these are indeed characters that most people would be familiar with. Now, this is uh, Paz, and he redirects internal power to include muscle implants for temporary speed boosts, and yes, his tier 2 does give the speed boost to the rest of his teammates as well. It's a pretty sweet thing to be synergized with uh, both a cloak and the move speed, and you're going in, then you pop the health regen, uh, there's some nice combinations you can sort of throw together during the gameplay. Alright, moving on to the next guy. This guy's this got a cyber sentry. Deploys sentry a sentry that automatically targets any enemies in range. Tier 2 increases the turret's field of view. And the next guy here launches a missile from a hidden launcher system in his arm. His Tier 2 launches two missiles. Moving on. Just to look at the other characters, info on her. Powers an active camo layer that makes the wearer temporarily invisible. Tier 2 is a skill sync available, which makes everybody who interacts with her in the area invisible as well. This character releases a hunter drone that explodes on contact with an enemy. This is actually pretty nasty. And the tier 2 releases two drones. Man, you'll turn around and see those little drones coming at you. And you're trying to shoot them because you're in a bit of a panic. Because if they hit you, it's boom, boom, you're dead. And finally, the other character available. Connects eyes to a satellite uplink to make enemies visible through walls. This is very, very sexy and useful. You're running through an area, you're not sure where everybody is. All of a sudden, this guy pops his special ability. You can see them coming through corners. What a strategic advantage that is. This is very nice to have that guy on your team. Now, let's go in for those of you who want to take a look at the options available real quick. As you can see, there is aim sensitivity. You can turn mouse acceleration down. Sensitivity for the iron, iron sights is done separately. 
there's mouse inversion and this keybind right here is handy as all get out actually during the game without having to go into a menu you can turn the aim sensitivity up and down simply by choosing these buttons and of course you can rekeybind these to be whatever the heck you want them to be but that is so nice and over in the dialog box as well it tells you what you've turned your sensitivity up and down to so if it's like set on like i don't know 50 if you turn it down it go it'll tell you as you go down 49 48 47 46 so you can do that actively in the game without having going to a menu that is absolutely fantastic as you can see all the other key bindings can be rebound as well graphic settings not a ton to see here uh full screen a bit of a misnomer, this game does not actually run in a true full screen. This is actually a borderless window, which may also have something to do with sort of the hiccups and stuttering and optimization issues we were talking about earlier. Uh, resolution, as I said, I have a few problems trying to get it to go to 1920 by 1080. Every time I hit apply, it would crash, but it finally did do so. So hopefully that was just something I was having an issue with. It did eventually sort itself out. Uh, vertical sync for those of you who require that sort of thing, especially if you're an AMD CP or GPU, obviously. Uh, video settings high all the things shadows settings are different set apart we've got anti-aliasing game features we've got red doll effects you can switch to a left hand mode which is actually nice and of course all the sound settings for effects the ambient sound the music and the master volume so I, I, probably the only thing really missing here is maybe an FOV slider uh, of course, if there's too much of one, it could offer strategic advantage to some people, but it's always nice to see something, especially in a first-person game, to see an FOV slider in the game. Now for a look at the game modes. As I mentioned earlier, there are three modes currently in the game. The first one is the one that you saw gameplay of, the Team Deathmatch, which is just kill everybody. Terminal Conquest is all about capturing and holding points. And Demolition is one team defends certain points, the other team comes in and tries to plant explosives to destroy them. So those are the three game modes in right now. have seen talk of PvE content coming in the future and maybe a couple other game modes, but this is what's in the game currently available in Early Access on Steam right now. And then finally, for those curious, we'll take a look at the server list. We've got uh, a US East, West, European East and West, and a dedicated Australian server. So there you go, Aussies. So just a few final thoughts on the game here. Uh, first off, obviously this is Early Access. Things are still under development here. As you can see as we queue up for another game here, there's not really a ton of matchmaking as far as dividing up players based on experience, skill level, mods, upgrades to the characters and weapons. Everybody's sort of getting thrown into the games together. But, I mean, that's okay early on. You're going to have a limited player base in something like this, especially with the as small as it is, you know, $5 minimal buy-in sort of barrier there. You're definitely going to have a smaller player base in the early access then hopefully you will once it launches. So everybody just sort of getting grouped up, playing the game, sort of testing everything out, and just sort of making sure everything's working right now. So keep that in mind as you're going into this and, and really any other early access game anytime that these are absolutely still under development. Now this one has a nice developer in Neeple, has a nice publisher in Nexon. They've made a point to say, hey, we do not want this to be a pay to win game. We want a fair cash shop. It's going to help make us a few bucks, but be fair to the players out there. That's encouraging to hear. We're going to have to come back at a later date and sort of investigate as that real monetization gets put into the game. Are they going to introduce just skins for like weapons and characters? Are you going to be able to purchase, you know, the grind points via cash? I would sort of expect both of those options, but just as long as that's sort of all that there is and the grind points can be acquired and all the weapons and mods can be acquired through gameplay and it's it's, you know, they're called GP grind points. It's a little bit of a grind, but it's not too terrible. I mean, I'm just level three. I've already got an upgrade for my weapon. I'm already working on unlocking a new weapon. I've already got to unlock for another character. So I'm progressing rather well. Obviously, right now, the big thing that really needs to get sorted, and hopefully will, because like I said, early access, things are still getting worked on, is the optimization issues, the uh, the server lag, the, the hiccups, the stuttering, the low frame rates, it doesn't matter if you have a high-end system, a low-end system, if you have settings on high, settings on low. Some, a lot of folks, including myself, are seeing a lot of optimization issues. Hopefully, those get sorted out in the future. We will definitely want to come back and take a look at that later on. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for checking out the MMO Bomb first look for Ghost in the Shell First Assault Online. As always, stay tuned in to MMO Bomb for all your free-to-play news and information. My name has been Troy Blackburn. You can follow me on Twitter at NoobFridge. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and we will catch you next time.